Hello, everyone. Good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As we're discussing thanatology and continuing with the previous topic that we were discussing, rigor mortis. The learning objective of this lecture will be that we'll be discussing certain special features which are noticed in rigor mortis and they should not be confused with some pathological entities. So they are changes which we notice in heart, skin, eyes, seminal vesicle, and uterus. So these are of special mention. So we'll discuss in this lecture about them. Then what is about the breaking of rigor? How it breaks and what will happen when it breaks? Then we'll learn the progression of rigor mortis because it helps in determining postmortem interval. And that is the objective of autopsy, one of the objective of the autopsy. Then I will be discussing various factors which affect the appearance of rigor mortis, that is in hastening or in slowing down the process. And they are basically uh, dependent upon the glycogen content in the muscles, which means the degree of muscle activity at the time of death, the environmental temperature, the age of the individual, because the younger ones have less muscle mass, having less glycogen content. So these are the factors which affect. Then the glycogen reserves. Then I will be discussing the graphic representation, how we plot a graph in the development of Riker mortis. So continuing with the topic of today, that is special features of Riker mortis, like heart. The Riker mortis of the heart muscle produces a firm, thickened and contracted left ventricle, and it contains little blood in it. And this finding should not be confused or mistaken as myocardial hypertrophy. Similarly, the secondary muscle lacidity may result in the distension or dilatation of the atria and the ventricle, and this should not be mistaken for anti-mortem dilatation of the chambers because of myocardial degeneration. Similarly, in skin, the rigor mortis of erector pili muscles causes the contraction and it results in the erection of the hair, which is cutis and serena or goose-like skin. The skin become puckered, that is due to contraction of erector pili muscle. And this condition is also seen in drowning, where it is believed that this phenomena is caused by the agonal contraction of the erector pili muscle because of cold water. So similar thing sometimes can be seen by the correct contraction of erector pili muscles at the time of, uh, uh, when the Riker mortal sets in. So this is a picture showing the uh, erection of the hair by the contraction of the erector pili muscles, the lower, the, you can see the puckered skin. And this is how it appears, the erector pili muscle puckered and the hair follicle, they stand up. Now about the other features in the eye, the rigor mortis, it affects the iris muscle also, and it results in the development of irregularity of the pupil. The pupil become irregular. And similarly, in seminal vesicle, the contraction of the seminal muscles, seminal vesicle muscle, there will be emission of the seminal fluid. And this may not be mistaken for any evidence of emission of semen because of sexual assault. Similarly, in uterus, the postmortem delivery can take place if the uh, lady is childbearing and because of the contraction of the uh, uterine muscle in rigor, it may expel the fetus out in this is postmortem delivery. Now about the breaking of rigor. In rigor, the muscles are more brittle. And if the limb 
or any joint after the rigor mortis has been developed is forcefully bent with bent with force then the rigor will break and it will become flaccid the arms or the legs if you forcefully bend the rigor will break and they will become loose and now the rigor will not appear again it will disappear forever because we have broken the rigor it will not appear again so this is about the breaking of the rigor that you can break with force but once it is broken it will not appear again Now, rigor mortis as a parameter of determining time sets. That this is the most important objective of the uh, autopsy. That since how long this body is dead. Rigor mortis, though, is an uncertain criteria because it is affected by certain factors. So, but anyhow, it helps it with other other parameters. You apply all the parameters, and then. you can find out the uh, period so the rigor mortis this is 12 plus 12 plus 12 that means initial 12 it takes 12 hours to develop on and once it is developed it will stay there for next 12 hours and after 24 hours it will pass off in next 12 hours in the similar fashion as it has developed from head to toe so that's why it is called 12 plus 12 plus 12 that is 12 hours it takes to develop on for 12 hours it will stay and for next 12 hour it will pass away if the body is in full rigor that means rigor is developed you move the toe of the foot and it if it is in rigor that means 12 to 24 hours is the time bracket and if the upper half of the body there is rigor mortis is passing off but in the limbs lower leg and the toe it is present that means 24 to 36 hours so this is a time bracket how we can estimate the time sense step from right it means that the rigor mortis as i have explained it takes 12 hours to develop on stays for 12 hours and in the next 12 hours it will pass away but there are certain factors which affect the appearance the stay and passing off of the rigor mortis so what are those factors which affect the development of rigor mortis number one the degree of muscle activity at the time of death the environmental temperature age of the individual and the glycogen reserves of the muscles about the degree of muscle activity at the time of death means that if the muscle had been subjected to prolonged muscular activity before death then the glycogen reserves in the muscle they will become depleted like deaths in drowning the mus the individual is struggling for uh, surviving and the muscles are actively involved in convulsions due to any reason exhaustion in the battlefield soldier is fighting and the muscles have been exhausted and depleted of the glycogen reserves so these are few situations then the onset of rigor in such situations will be rapid because the glycogen reserves are less atp production will be smaller for smaller duration in rigor mortis will sets in early and when it sets early the duration is short so it's a general rule that when the rigor mortis sets in rapidly the duration is always short in the relative absence of muscular activity like sudden death the death happening suddenly and the muscle rigor mortis in this situation will be delayed and duration will be prolonged because all the glycogen reserves which were present before death remains there and they will be utilized after death in anaerobic glycogenolysis 
ATP production will continue for longer duration, so the duration of rigor will be prolonged. Now about the environmental temperature, that environmental temperature, if it is raised, the rigor mortis will be hastened and duration will be short. And if the environmental temperature is low, then it retards, the process will be slowed down and then the rigor mortis will be for longer duration. About the age of the individual, it appears early in the infants and the babies and disappears early because the infants or the baby has small muscle mass, that's why it appears early. Similarly, in old people, the onset is also rapid that because of the wasting of the muscle, because the uh, old people, they have less muscle mass. So that's why in extreme ages, the rigor mortis develops early and it disappears early. Now about the glycogen reserves, rigor mortis, as we know, is dependent upon the glycogen reserves of the muscle. If the reserves are more, then the rigor is delayed. And if the reserves are less, then it starts early as a death in due to prolonged and chronic illnesses because of the wasting of the muscle, because of lesser glycogen, it appears early and passes off early. So this is also the reason that it developed first in the short muscles and then in the larger muscle. We, so, we say that it develops from head to toe, that is first appear in the facial muscles because the face muscles are small. And small muscles have less glycogen contents. That's why the rigor mortis appears first in the small muscle and then in the larger muscles of the trunk and the limb because the muscle mass is more, glycogen contents are more, and body will be relaxed state for longer duration. So the rigor mortis will be developed late. Now the time period or the progression of the rigor mortis. Early in summers, late in winters, it starts in two to three hours after death. These two to three hours are those time period during which anaerobic glycogenolysis is going on as the glycogen reserves in the muscles are there and the muscle body remains warm and relaxed in these two to three hours. And when the glycogen reserves are depleted, Lactic acid accumulated, which retards the process of anaerobic glycogenolysis, and then the rigor mortis starts first in the face and eye and mouth, then to the it progresses to the neck, upper limb, trunk, and the lower limb within 12 hours. That means it develops from head to toe in 12 hours. It takes 12 hours to develop full rigor mortis. Then it stays for 12 hours and passes off in 12 hours in similar fashion as it has developed from head to toe. So that's why it is, the figure is uh, of rigor mortis is stated as 12 plus 12 plus 12. That means it takes 12 hours to develop on, for 12 hours it will stay and in the next 12 hours it will pass away. Now about the graphic represent, how we plot a graph of rigor mortis. And this is how, for initial two to three hours, it is not, it has not been developed. And then it keeps on developing till the 12 hours, then it stays till 24 hour, and then passes off in the 36 hours. So this is how we plot a graph for rigor mortis. So summary of today's lecture is that in this lecture we have learned certain special features which are of special mentioning because they may not be confused with pathology and these features are in the heart, skin, eyes, seminal vesicle and the uterus. And we have discussed about the rigor, uh, breaking of the rigor mortis and how the rigor mortis progresses. We have discussed in detail and learned about it. Then we have learned how the rigor mortis helps in determination of time system. And we have also discussed various factors which affect the appearance of rigor mortis. And we have learned the 
uh, that these factors are the degree of muscle activity at the time of death, the environmental temperature, the age, and the glycogen reserves of the individual. Then we have discussed the graphic appearance of the Riker mortis. Thank you very much. Take care, and we'll continue the Riker mortis lecture in the in the topic in the next lecture. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, and this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.